When you're asked about your identity, you often seem to be very uncomfortable answering the questions about it. From an outsider's perspective, it seems that you do not really believe you are Mary Magdalene. Why are you so uncomfortable if you know you are Mary Magdalene? Yes, it's true. For a long time, I've appeared very uncomfortable, especially at seminars and in public talking about who I am. And the, the simplest answer to that question is that I've just been very afraid of how others will perceive me. Which is sad, really, because in the end I've given them a perception of myself that isn't very honest. I've been suppressing who I am because I want to avoid judgment or criticism. Probably to, to give context maybe to what's been going on inside of me, <laughs> is that I'm aware that us saying that we're Jesus and Mary Magdalene is very confronting for a lot of people. A lot of Christians have a lot of investment in Jesus being celibate. Mm. Uh, and we still receive emails and things from people just not only abusing us for making these claims but saying that, you know, Jesus would never touch someone like me or these kinds of things or would never touch a woman, basically. So I've, I've been fully aware that many religious people would find me speaking about who I am to be quite confronting to their own beliefs and that they might get really angry. Mm. And some of them have done. Not all of them. Some of them have done. Uh, so that's been one reason why I've just wanted to, to shut down about the whole thing. I'm also aware that a lot of people in uh, other spiritual circles have quite an investment in Mary Magdalene being a certain way, being um, quite confident and uh, all-knowing and very attractive and... Um, here to, here to help people and be the divine feminine and, and all of these kinds of things. And for me, that's been really scary because I don't feel any of those things. And so I've felt really exposed in public. I've felt like, wow, <laughs> I'm not really that impressive. <laughs> and, and here I am saying who I am. And I've wanted to just sort of hide behind the nearest piece of furniture most of the time. <laughs> Sometimes you can see me in talks almost behind the whiteboard <laughs> because I haven't really, I haven't felt confident about uh, who I am and I've also felt that people might attack me from other, not just Christians, but other people might attack me for not being impressive enough. Yeah. Also, I feel that a lot of non-spiritual or people without spiritual beliefs basically have the feeling that... Um, I've, I've lost it, I like that I have some kind of psychiatric illness or that I'm somehow controlled by this cult leader who's saying he's <coughs> Jesus and, and I, that's really not very nice feeling either to have people um, present you with. And my, my family, my immediate family, since I met AJ, have basically said that they can't accept our life, who we are, or even just agree to disagree about um, our beliefs. And they've rejected us. They've been really nasty to me and AJ, like they've called us names, they've abused us, they've told me I'm throwing my life away, they've told me that, you know, that basically I've lost it and I've gone crazy. So that all happened before I even attended a public seminar with AJ. So for me, if my own family was going to do that, how was the world going to respond? And that made me really not very confident in public talking about these things. My fear was such that I just, that's what was dominating the way I was communicating. I just felt, oh, how's everyone going to cope with this? How's everyone going to cope with this? And I just, I just would clam up and get really shaky and look flaky, basically. Like, I feel like, to be very honest, I'm aware that I've looked really uncertain, unsure, flaky. Often I've been really almost passive or passive aggressive with AJ while he's talking about who he is because it's scaring me so much. And I'm aware that all of that is, people can see that. <laughs> um, even if they don't know exactly what's going on, they can see that there's something not right and it makes it appear like I'm not very certain. Mm. 
And in a way, I was invested in that, really, because it helped me avoid other people feeling other things towards me, like that I, that I was claiming glory or I was claiming to be special or that I did think I was all that or that um, I did want to ruffle their feathers or I did want to confront them. And, and none of those things are true, but I didn't want anyone to even consider that that might be true about me or to feel that towards me. I also know that historically there's been men on earth who've claimed to be Jesus, who aren't Jesus, who have done really horrible things to other people. And, and so I was aware that by us saying who we are, people would naturally start to be suspicious. Or maybe it's not naturally, but commonly <laughs> yeah. they would be suspicious. Many people base their um, reactions to new things on what's happened in the past with old things. So us saying that we're Jesus and Mary Magdalene, to me, meant that most people would view what had happened in the past and project that onto us. And that does happen quite a bit. And I just, I simply wasn't humble enough to experience that, just stay true to myself and let other people have their own experience and their own opinions. I feel more in that place now, you know, I feel it's okay for people to believe what they want to believe about us. It doesn't make it true. And actually, I'm more able to experience any grief or fear that I have about what they might say or want to do to us as a result of it. I wouldn't say that I'm completely comfortable still talking about who I am in every situation. I still have fears come up and I still sometimes don't feel like I want to share with someone if they're not um, really believing me mm. or even open to the idea. But I'm challenging that more now and I feel like... At least I've come to a sense of some peace inside of myself, of desiring to be myself, no matter how others feel about that. There's still work to go. <laughs> as mm. many people will see, even the way I speak in seminars, often I'm not as confident as I perhaps feel about the topic because I'm, I'm still concerned about how I'm being viewed by others. And I still sometimes want to rely on AJ because he's dealt with a lot of these issues. He's very confident and he's, he's okay to receive projections or emotions from people that are not perhaps kind or comfortable and still continue to be himself. Uh, for me, that's, I'm a work in progress still on that issue and in addressing your question, in the past, I was really not coping with it in terms of I was not being willing to just let other people have their experience and me have mine and still be confidently myself. And so I would be flaky and in indirect, um, unspecific, all these things that make people think, oh, gee, she really doesn't know what's going on there. And, you know, a lot of people said, oh, it's all, it's all AJ feeding her things. And that's very much not the case. Yeah. <laughs> um, I was very strict with AJ, if you like, <laughs> when we first met and told him that I didn't want him to talk to me about any of his memories, that I wasn't going to necessarily believe anything that he believed, that I had to have my own experience and I was actually quite controlling of him in a way. But he respected that very much and he has never, he's never made it a condition of our relationship even that I share his beliefs about things. Um, but I certainly, I mean, I, I do share his beliefs about just about everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. mm.